Welcome to the fifth video on Inverse Laplace. This video is focused on ODEs. We will assume that students are already competent in standard inverse Laplace techniques for arbitrary transfer functions. And here we're going to look at a slightly different perspective um, to the videos on block diagrams which have covered the same topic as we're going to cover here, but they looked at it from a different angle. Here, we're looking at scenarios where a process is excited by an input signal and the user wishes to determine the corresponding output signal, but we're particularly going to use Laplace techniques rather than time domain techniques. Consider this scenario then. You have a first order ordinary differential equation. You can see the one given in the box here, a dx dt plus bx equals ku. Now this ODE has an input signal u of t. And what we're particularly interested in is finding the corresponding output signal, I'll write it here, corresponding output signal x of t. And what we're going to do is use Laplace techniques to do this. So the first step is to take Laplace transforms of all the signals in the equation. Here we go. So I get a times s x of s minus x of 0 plus b x of s equals k u of s. And you'll notice for convenience here I'm using capitals for the transforms and lowercase for the time domain signals. Now having taken Laplace transforms of everything in the loop, I can reorganize this to separate out the x of s. Here we go. So x of s now is given as k u of s plus a x of 0, well we've lost something there, divided by a s plus b. And you'll notice um, a box that's just appeared at the top here. You can use the same approach for higher order ODEs, which is why we've only given a simple example here. You simply take Laplace transforms of everything in the loop and then reorganize the equation to separate out the signal that you're interested in, in this particular case, x of s. <coughs> an example then. Consider an RC circuit, which can be modeled by a simple first order ODE given there. And there's a little typo in this equation. That C should be a capital C. But I'm sure that won't bother you too much. You're given the values of R, 10 to the minus 2, and C, 2 times 10 to the minus 5. And you're also given that the applied voltage is 12 volts. And what you need to do is say, OK, I would like you to solve for the response of this system. In other words, how does the charge change with time? The first step then is to take Laplace transforms of everything in the loop. And you'll see that's what we've done here. So you get capital R times S Q of S minus Q of zero plus one over C Q of S equals V of S. Next then rearrange this to separate out Q of S on its own. So I've done that here and you'll see the answer is V of S plus R Q of zero divided by R S plus one over C. Now usually when we're doing inverse Laplace, we like the poles to be written in pole zero form because then they match up to things we've got in the table. So you'll notice here on the right, I've put the uh, pole factor in pole zero form by dividing by capital R. So consequently, I need to divide all the numerator terms by capital R as well. Now, if you remember R, here it is, it's 10 to the minus two. V is 12. So 12 divided by 10 to the minus 2 gives me this 1200. So that's where the 1200 over S has come from. And RQ of 0 becomes just Q of 0. So this is the function I'm interested in. 1200 over S plus Q of 0, all divided by S plus 1 over RC. Now, what I've done next is you'll see I've actually separated this into two different bits. Now you don't have to do this, but often you will find it's convenient. You'll find it, I've got a bit here which could be considered the forced response because that bit depends upon the applied voltage. And you'll notice there are two poles because you get one pole from the system dynamics and one pole from the applied voltage, uh, which is treated a bit like a step. And then you've got this other bit over here, which could notionally be called the free response. And you'll notice that depends solely on the initial condition, has no dependence on the input at all. And therefore, it's just got Q of zero, the initial charge in the top. Now, this one just has a single pole because it only depends on the system dynamics. And that may be a good reason for solving these separately, because one set of partial fractions is more difficult 
than the other. Right, let's use our standard inverse Laplace techniques to solve this. So I've put in the numbers first. I've noted that 1 over RC, using the numbers I've got on the other side, are 5 times 10 to the 6. So the first step, I've just substituted in 1 over RC is 5 times 10 to the 6. Next step, I do my partial fractions. I'm not going through those steps in fine detail. You can do that yourself. And you see what you get. You get 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 over S plus Q of 0 minus 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 over S plus 5 times 10 to the 6. And from here on, the inverse Laplace is automatic from your tables. A second example then. And you'll notice this example is second order. So 500 d2x dt squared plus 2000 dx dt plus 1500x equals 0.2f. And you're given f is 100 newtons. This system represents a suspension unit. Now again, we're going to use exactly the same steps as before. First, take Laplace transforms of everything in this equation. And this is what you get. 500 times s squared x plus 4sx plus 3x equals 0.2 f of s plus 500 s x of 0 plus x dot of 0 plus 2000 x of 0. You will notice that including all these initial conditions is a bit messy. Um, but if you've got initial conditions, that's what you'll have to do. Now I'm going to rearrange this to solve for x of s. So you'll see that's all I've done here in a straightforward fashion. 0.2 f of s plus 500 s x of 0 plus x dot of 0 plus 2000 x of 0 all divided by 500 s squared plus 4 s plus 3. And then again, what I've done, as on the previous page, I've separated it into a forced bit, so the bit that depends on the applied force, and then this bit here, the bit that depends on the initial conditions, which is the free. And in many cases, you'll be given zero initial conditions, and that will make that second bit disappear. Hereafter, we can use standard inverse Laplace techniques. So, given the initial conditions are separated, because it's commonplace to assume these are zero, um, what we've got now is two sets of partial fractions. You can, of course, combine these if you want. Now, here's the partial fraction that we're trying to solve. We've got 0.04 divided by s times s squared plus 4s plus 3, and then plus sx0 plus x dot 0 plus 4x0 of s squared plus 4s plus 3. The first thing to do then is to recognize where are the poles in this, and I hope it's obvious to you that s squared plus 4s plus 3 equals s plus 1, s plus 3. So the next step, I'm going to write down what I expect the partial fractions to look like. So the forced response, 0.04 over s, s squared plus 4s plus 3, can be written here as a over s plus b over s plus 1 plus c over s plus 3. And I would probably use the cover-up rule to do this. You don't have to, but that's probably what I would do. The second bit, the free response, you'll see you just get two terms, d over s plus 1 plus e over s plus 3. And again, I would probably use the cover-up rule to find those. Yes, you find that B and D have got the same dynamics, C and E have got the same dynamics, but I still conjecture for these simple cases, it's easier to do those partial fractions separately rather than trying to give yourself a big uh, numerator that's all the same. A third example. Here we've got a tank system with an inflow F of T, and you're interested in the depth in the tank. Now I've given the equation to represent the depth, here it is, 4 dhtt plus 0.02h equals 0.04f. And here you'll notice that the flow is considered to be sinusoidal. And what I'm going to do to avoid unnecessary algebra is assume zero initial conditions. So first step again, let's take our Laplace transforms. Here we go. So I get 4s h of s plus 0.02h of s equals 0.04. And then I need the Laplace of this sinusoid which is going to be 0.01 times 0.2 over s squared plus 0.01 squared. And if anyone hasn't spotted this, this bit that I'm just circling in blue here, this is the Laplace of sine 0.01t, which you'll notice I've just multiplied by 0.2. OK.
and the other thing that I've done, I was just uh, thinking for a minute there, is you'll notice this 0 0.04 has come from here and the 0 0.2 has come from here. That's why there's two constants in that particular equation. Let's look now at h of s. If I rearrange this to get h of s, I've now got 2 times 10 to the minus 5 in the numerator and simple factors in the denominator, s plus 0 0.005 and s squared plus 0 0.01 squared. And again, you'll see this is now in a standard Laplace form and you can use standard inverse Laplace techniques. We're going to give you some of the details here just to help you. So there's the transform again. Now, if I put this in partial fractions, I'm going to get a term of this form, A of S plus 0 0.005, and then a term like this. And you'll notice what I've done is I've expressed the numerator in the forms that lead me straight to a sinusoid and straight to a cosine. So the 0 0.01B of S squared plus 0 0.01 squared tells me that there will be a B sine 0.01t and the cs tells me there will be a c cos 0.01t so that was a trick we've used in the earlier videos i can use the cover-up rule to find a and that's what's done in this top line here if you look i've simply crossed over the s plus 0.005 substituted s equals minus 0.005 into what's left and that gives me A. So you've got the algebra here, and you'll see it comes out as 0.16. I'm not dwelling on it because this detail is covered in the early videos. Now, because the other um, partial fraction bit is a quadratic, it's easier to multiply out longhand in order to find B and C. So that's what I've done. You can see here I've multiplied out longhand, and I've got A times S squared plus 0.01 squared plus 0.01b plus cs times s plus 0.005 equals 2 times 10 to the minus 5. I can equate coefficients of s squared to notice that c equals minus a, so that's minus 0.16. And then I can equate, equate coefficients of s to get this expression here, which gives me that b equals 0.08. So in summary, this video has demonstrated that Laplace can be used to solve simple ODEs. The technique is to take Laplace of every element of the model equation, rearrange to separate the output, and then use inverse Laplace. You need to take care to include initial conditions correctly where required. Now, finally, I've not included examples of high order ODEs because, in my view, if you've got a high order ODE and the algebra really is beginning to get quite complex, you should really be using a computer.